This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined by the Ben Will Bomber, Joe Laws, on this Sunday morning. Joe, first and foremost, before we get on to the big night of boxing, how are you? I'm fine, mate. I'm good. Uh, I feel good myself. I'm back training every day. Uh, so, happy days. Bomber will be back uh, 2021. No doubt about it. Well, there you go. And I'm sure watching everything that unfolded last night just had you even more itching to get yourself back in there. So let's talk about it. Main event, Josh Kelly suffered the first defeat of his career at the hands of David Avenisian. David kept his European welterweight title. What did you make mm-hmm. of the fight watching from last night, Joe? You know what? I'm seeing tweets all over saying Josh Kelly's a quitter. This, it's a, it's a load of shite. The similar fact was he fought a world-level Russian after, t- after 10 fights. Josh Kelly's He's only had 10 fights, you know what I mean? And that David Anavishan beats most world level kids. Uh, <laughs> he fought a Russian who was absolutely nails, and uh, he just did not cut off from that elbow. He got, he got, he got roughened up. And fair play to David, the Batman won the night. But um, Josh, he came in in fantastic shape, he gave it his all, and he went out on his shield. And I think that was a smart move by, uh, by Adam Booth from the Towling. Because maybe Josh Kelly could last it another round. He would have got up. But like I say, he's only had 10 fights. Now we'll go back to the gym. He'll be group. And he'll come again. Josh started well last night, but then obviously he got the cut. And every time he tried to look for a breather, David was right there on his chest, putting pressure on straight away. How much does Josh learn from last night, that experience of being in there with David Avenition? He, le- he learned he learn loads from it. Uh, I really, really rate that David Avenition. He's stale. His style is like my perfect style, you know what I mean? The small for the weight, the compact. Uh, I was really, really impressed by him. And I think Josh, he's a, he came in a fantastic shape. He boxed well, but he seemed to fade a bit as the rounds went on. I wasn't sure if that was... Um, he, could, he could struggle at the weight, I don't know. That Dave Anavishin could just be an absolute beast. The only person who would know is Anna Booth and Josh Kelly, you know what I mean? But I think fighting them were level kids. You can't only but uh, come back better, you know what I mean? You said it. this was relatively early in Josh Kelly's career and for all his talent, he did sort of bypass domestic level and go straight in with someone like David Avenisian. Do you think yeah, that's to come next for Josh? Do you think he maybe has to go back to domestic level and rebuild? He does, I am. Um... He's still a baby in the sport. He's what? I, I, I think he's the same age as me, 26. He's only 26. But uh, I remember he fought for like, the youth in title. I thought, like, no, I think it was the Commonwealth. He fought for the Commonwealth at, um, at, uh, in Newcastle Arena after like six, seven fights, you know what I mean? So I think he just got fast tracked a bit too fast. He's been found out. Now, now he goes back to the gym, he regroups, and he comes back, you know what I mean? But I think. Uh, I think dropping down to domestic level will be uh, will be his next uh, his next step. Uh, another fight, I'm sure you had a keen eye on Florian Marku uh, got the stoppage win over Ryland Charlton last night. Marku uh, came out the blocks quickly, started well, got complacent, got knocked down, but then really ramped up the pressure. As towel came in. What do you yeah, make, Joe? You know what? I'm fucking. Uh, I, I think I made a tweet. I went fair play to Marku. He done what needed to be done, but he still sucked off a horse. Uh, I don't know how he can start saying to me, I'm a kid on this. He beat him, he beat him, he beat you. That, that means now styles make fights. I went in the fight against Raylan Charlin, not knowing, not knowing what he was like. There was literally one clip of him on YouTube for about three minutes, which I didn't even watch. I went in that fight not knowing what he was like. I came in the fight, and I shouldn't have been uh, fighting. I was like a fucking, I was like an empty carcass. I got hit on the forehead. I didn't look over. Whereas, like, if if I knew I was fighting Marku, if I knew I was fighting Charlin, I'd put a game plan together. And that's what Marku did. He put the perfect game plan together. He was taking shots in the ropes, but uh, he was, like, absorbing them. He, wa- he wasn't standing there. He was using his jab. And uh, to be fair, he boxed well. Fair play to him. And, uh, that that Reynolds looked a bit uh, a bit one dimensional, but uh, like I say, Marku, he did uh, he did good. 
Watching that last night, was there anything that surprised you about either man? Obviously, share the ring with Ryland. Did anything surprise you watching that fight? You know what? No. Like, personally, I thought that, I thought the first two rounds, Marco was going to box him. And then I thought between four and seven, Charlton was going to stop him. But uh, I think Marco realised Charlton is a big puncher. So he worked, on, he worked loads on speed. And he just used his boxing against him. And he was a naturally bigger kid, you know what I mean? So I think um, he played into his hands a bit. But you've got to give Charlton props. Uh, it was a right move by his corner, throwing the towel in. Uh, he wasn't going nowhere. He was getting up. He was trying. But uh, that's boxing. Styles make fights. And on that night, on that night, Marku was the better style. He came in and he showed up. Fair play. One more fight I wanted to touch on on the card, Joe. We saw Robbie Davis Jr. get beat by Gabriel Valenzuela. Another Mexican has came over to the UK uh, mm-hmm. and, and got himself a victory. Robbie looked a bit conflicted with his style at times in there. Uh, there was there was a lot made of the, the communication between him and Dom mm-hmm. Ingle. What did you make of that fight that we saw last night? You know what? Uh, I was good for, the, uh, for Robbie. Good for him. Uh, he showed grit, balls and, and determination, I tell you. Because uh, at times... You would watch it and you'd be like, Pooh, this kid's coming on, coming on. The next thing now, he just ramps up the levels and he turns southpaw, he lands some good shots, uh, he makes a miss. Them Mexicans just didn't fucking quit, did they? Like them Russians, the Albanians, the Mexicans, they're just hard as the hardest nails. They've got infinite health. You whack them, us Brits fall over, I'm a crumble. Them Mexicans get harder. I'm like, what the fuck are they meeting? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, but you know what? That kid was a good, good kid. He's got two losses on his record. But both losses on his record are against undefeated Mexicans. And you don't want to be fighting Mexicans in this hostile environment where there's uh, no crowd there. Because for one, they're my used to it. And for two, Mexicans are just hard as nails, aren't they? But uh, it was a good fight. Fair result. I, I, I was a bit biased. Like, obviously, because I like Robbie, I thought he could have got it, but it was just a, it was a hard fight. It was a hard day at the office for us Brits last night, to be fair. It certainly was. Now, Joe, let's talk a bit about you. The last time you and I caught up on camera uh, it was, was after the Ryland Charlton defeat. You very great, graciously came on and said, you know, I'm not going to hide from anything. I've seen, I've been watching you on, on social media. You've been in the gym working hard since then. What did you learn from that whole experience now you've had a lot of time to reflect on it? You know what, uh, Ryan, mate? Now what I learned, right? I learned I can't go in the fucking ring with the ego up to here and just bring the opponents, you know what I mean? Uh, the best thing that happened to me was get flattened live on Sky Sports. Uh, I've went back to me boxing. I've went back to the basics. And trust us now, uh, me, box, uh, me, myself, I, I've came on leaps and bounds. Over the Christmas, had a bathroom month. With my nanny dying with, with personal problems, I've blown up the eight. I think I was like 83 kilo, my heaviest man. Uh, I'm back to it every day now. I'm back feeling good. I'm getting there. I'm getting good mm-hmm. spawning. Mm-hmm. My boxing's coming on. And I'm back in love with the sport, you know what I mean? And uh, like I say, stays make fights. I fought, uh, I fought Charlton with no idea what he was like. I just. All I seen was a picture of him. So I, I thought to myself, this juiced up fucking Divi can't deny with me. I got clipped on the forehead. My legs went, didn't recover. Now, if I knew what I knew, I'd go on the back, um, I'd go on the back foot. I'd, I'd be a bit more cute. I would, uh, I would throw more jabs, etc. So uh, I'm the same as Josh Kelly. I'm 26 years of age. I'm a little... I'm a baby in the sport. I'm still learning in the gym. I'm getting better. And I, I just can't wait for me to get back in the ring and show what I am about. Uh, hopefully this lockdown's uh, on its way out. I can uh, I can just get back to doing what I'm doing best. And that's entertaining and putting a good show on for us. Now, oh, Joe... You said you hopefully this lockdown ends soon and you didn't have your fans there. How strange was that on the night? Did you notice it at all? You know what? Uh, 
I seen loads of tweets about uh, Josh Warren last week saying he got beat because his fans weren't there. And I have people who know not about boxing about me saying Joe got beat because his fans wasn't there. I'm an honest kid. No, mate, I didn't. I got beat because I got clipped on the forehead and I didn't recover. And I watched myself that night. So you know what I mean? That was the plain and simple fact of it. If my fans were there, the only difference would have been I would have been knocked out in front of 9,000 people. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think crowds are. I think crowds make a big difference when you're in a hard fight, like a hard grueling fight. But if your legs go, your legs go. You know what I mean? Uh, that's when people are calling Josh Kelly like a quit ass shit yours. His legs went and he's corner through the towel, which is a, the exactly right move. You know what I mean? If your legs go, your legs go. Uh, it's got nothing to do with pain, like the pain factor quitting. Uh, I came in the face like a, I came in the face dehydrated, no food in us. I got clipped, I got clipped on the dome and I didn't recover. But uh, I learned more about myself that night. You know what I mean? Uh, after the second lockdown, if I just stayed on the canvas, no one would have said jack shit, Ryan, because it was a, it was a heavy knock, dude. But in my head, I was saying to myself, I can get up, yeah. I got up. I didn't know where I was. I, I didn't know whether I, I was in Petersburg or Timbuktu. <laughs> My legs were fucking floating. But I was saying I was saying to myself, yeah, I've got one more good shot left in me. And I remember being in the corner. I came out and I said what's myself. And uh, I just and I swung the hardest up I could I could muster. And I missed him by that much. And now as soon as I missed. I was thinking to myself, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm fucked, yeah, I'm fucked, yeah. But uh, I learned loads about myself that night. Uh, it's boxing. You go through and you get wet. How, uh, how many puns have I laid out in sparring, in, in fights, you know what I mean? It was just my turn. I'm a man about it. I went back to the gym. I went back to the drawing board. And I'm going to come back big and better this year. Now, Joe, what, what do you want when you come back? What is it you want in 2020? And I've seen you and Thomas Broadbent have been back and forward on social media. I've seen that got quite yeah. personal quite quickly as well. Tell me what, what happened there. Uh, now what? I was lying in bed one day over the Christmas, eating a nice pizza, enjoying myself. And then uh, I went on Sky Sports Boxing News or something. And I seen, uh, I seen like a headline saying, I'm going to shut the laws up or something daft like that. I was singing there, what the fuck's laws like? Is the is the in another box I call Laws? I clicked on and it said Joseph Laws in the picture of me. I was like, yeah, whoa, 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 time out, yeah. I was like, who the fuck's Thomas Broadbent? So I went on his Facebook and he's writing status after status with us. Well, listen to that football con. Or if you want, you can have it. You know what I mean? Uh, you can never ever be the biggest or hardest, but I will not take shit off Nakon without Mark who Thomas Broadbent or fucking far me with that. Nakon's Nakon. It's gonna sit there and talk and talk shit about us. You know what I mean? So if he wants us, if he wants it, he can have it. Uh, I'm I'm back training hard now. Uh, I want to come back the next six rounder, then an eight rounder, and then we'll we'll go from there. Possibly an era title fight. If again, if I, if you get the era title fight, it gets it gets you in the top ten for the English and then for the English. Some of them. Uh, or some of them world unions, them European unions, I don't know. But uh, I definitely want to be a uh, big campaign of, uh, for titles by the end of the year. All right, Joe, thank you so much for your time, pal. Uh, Look, man, a- Ryan, go the fucking man. I nah, appreciate it, Joe. You're, you've always been really kind of your time. Whenever I've asked, you've always been great. So I appreciate it. Have a good Sunday, mate. All right. Thanks, boy. You too. Speak to you, right. mate. You take care, Joe. <laughs>